ATL GA Faithful, my people. I'm D. Douglas Carter back on the scene doing my thing, and I just want to say I appreciate you and the work that you do. I'm going to hit y'all with like a trifecta on this video, some more Atlanta Falcons talk. Um, I'm going to run down a profile of two defensive players. Um, one could go in the top 10. Uh, one is going to be a definite steal, a, a diamond in the rough, a, a late round gem in the late rounds. Um, <clears throat> I got a question from uh, one of my subscribers, shout out 3 Dirty. Um, he was asking me about the Caleb McGarry situation. And then I'm going to hit y'all with a crazy mock draft trade back scenario. So let's go ahead and get rolling. First off, first draft prospect has been rising up the boards, rising up the boards, rising up the boards. Is he too high to take at number eight? Maybe, but in a trade back scenario, let's see. His name is Lucas Van Ness. He is a defensive lineman out of Iowa. Um, he was born in Barrington, Illinois. Uh, he is 21. He only played two years in college for Iowa, and he was never a starter. But they say he was never a starter. That doesn't mean he wasn't of starter caliber talent. He's young. He's raw. He's 6'5", about 270. And I say defensive lineman because he can slide to the inside. He, he prefers on the outside, but um, he could do them both. <clears throat> Uh, they like tag him as like a little mini Hercules or something like that. Um, the dude is definitely ripped up and shredded up. He is a former hockey player. So uh, that was his first love. Um, he's just kind of getting into football. But with his age and his coachability, he seems like a, a good guy. I think uh, Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith um, would like his ethos, his player makeup, his character. Looks like he's a hard worker. And um, with some NFL coaching, um, especially by our new DC, who uh, specializes in working with uh, defensive line talent, <clears throat> I think Lucas Van Ness could be a prime playmaker in the NFL for years to come. You just got to coach him up and you can kind of mold him to fit your scheme and he's super fast, he's super powerful, and I think he would just get stronger in the NFL, you know, get in the weight room. Uh, I don't know how much more ripped and cut up he could get, but I'm sure he could add a couple more pounds of power. And uh, that is the first draft prospect breakdown I'm doing, is Lucas Van Ness. Check him out if you wanna dig deeper. Um, I think he's a, a good prospect, a good prospect especially in the trade back scenario. So upon first look, Lucas Van Ness, I mean, he looks kind of goofy to me, but you can't hold that against him. ESPN said he had six and a half sacks, but then when you go to PFF on his profile, it says he had nine sacks last year, four the year before, uh, 31 hurries. Um, he's a playmaker now. Uh, the breakdown, he got good band, good power, um, he was primarily a bull rush, so the knock is, does he have any other moves? All right, so the next defensive line prospect is the gem, the steel, the diamond, and the rough in the late rounds. Um, <clears throat> he's labeled as a defensive interior, born right here in Valdosta, Georgia, Devonsha Maxwell. I'm not sure if it's Devonsha or Devonsha, but one of the other last name Maxwell. He um, played at a small school, uh, Chattanooga, but this guy is an absolute beast. He's 6'3", 296, so he can also play on the inside or the outside. And I think that's what we're looking for as the Atlanta Falcons is, you know, we got Grady, he's a staple. Um, we might need a big like run stuffer on first and second down. But besides that, you want guys that are kind of like an edge and a defensive tackle hybrid. Um, so 
this is what Devon Shaw Maxwell brings to the table. Um, he absolutely dominated the game at the level he played. Of course, the talent level he played against isn't the same as like the SEC and the big schools, but it's all about the player, man. You, you take him, you coach him, and you got an unstoppable force. Definitely a late round steal. Um, feel free to go do some more research on him yourself. But I'm telling y'all, he's the real deal. Now, upon further review with Maxwell, he don't really look goofy like a Van Ness. But like I said, you know, it don't really matter about that. Um, ESPN profile got him with seven and a half sacks, two forced fumbles. And then there's another discrepancy on PFF profile. It said he had nine sacks. Um, last year and then 14 the year before 16 hurries and 20 hurries playmaker all right next topic at hand my highlighted comment from three dirty shouts out to him has mcgarry in your opinion proven that he is perhaps worthy of his payday with us and what is the price that we could could afford to pay but not overpay uh, this was a hard one for me because I'm kind of torn on the situation. I don't know how our front office feels about it. Um, you know, McGarry, he is he has a heart condition, and that's been a problem in the past. I'm kind of wondering why it took him a contract year to step his game up. I don't know if it's just our run-heavy scheme that kind of um, did well for him. We know he's a better run blocker than a, a pass protector. So it's kind of iffy. Now, they could do a franchise tag, but I believe that's about $18.5 million for one year, and that's pretty hefty right there. Um, I think I'd be willing to, like, cut him a deal for, like, like five years, $14 million per year. Um, I really want to keep consistency with the offensive line because when you have the same unit, you learn from each other. You learn the styles of who you're playing next to, and it just makes for a better offensive line or whatever unit you are, um, you know, knowing each other's skills and, and what the, the next person's going to do helps everybody's game. So I would like to keep him, but I don't want him to get a huge payday. I feel like if he's asking for more than 15 mil, we might have to let him walk. Um, but I think we could find a similar, you know, cheaper option maybe if he wants too much money. So that's my opinions on that. I answered it down in the comments too um, if you check out my other videos. But, yeah, what do y'all think? Let me know. Now, to end this video with the crazy haul in a trade back scenario mock draft. Trade back with the Eagles just a little bit, but got a haul. Taking edge, Lucas Van Ness that I did the profile on. Think it could be a steal right there. And then I got halfback Bijan Robinson, the most complete back in the draft to add some firepower. Wide receiver, born in Swanee, Georgia. Josh Downs, one of the best receivers in the draft. Quick, fast, good changeup with London. And then... I got tight end Darnell Washington to pair up with Kyle Pitts. We going to have the two big boys uh, right there for Desmond Ritter making plays. Then Jalen Hyatt fell to me right here. I couldn't pass him up. Adding another wide receiver. We're going to have playmakers all over the place if we hit something like this. Next, I took cornerback Jalen Jones out of Texas A&M. Uh, he's a hard-hitting corner. I think he'd probably be better suited for a safety. So he's like a cornerback safety right here. Then I took defensive interior, Keandre Coburn. He's like a poor man, Siaka Ika. Um, big dude, uh, massive. He's like 340-plus if we need to plug him in on first and second down to uh, stop the run. Then I got... A more uh, premier edge, in my opinion, K.J. Henry. I think he's underrated. I think he's one of the better edges in this class. Then I got another sleeper corner, Julius Brents out of Kansas State. Um, he's tall. He's lengthy. And I think he's another steal right there. 
Then Devon Shea Maxwell out of Valdosta. My diamond in the rough right there. And then, uh, you know, I took Alex Forsyth Center out of Oregon. He has a crazy story, but um, I think he could be some good depth and a future star in the making. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this haul right here. I got everything we needed plus some. Got some of the cream of the crop, some gems. Um, I'm going to end this video like I end all my videos. Thank God works. And I hope you have a blessed rest of your day or night. One.